Jeff, thank you so much for, for being here. Sure. Um, uh, Jeff, maybe you'll start a few words about yourself, your background, and kind of what you do in life. Sure. Thanks for having me, Danny. Uh, my first 25 my, years of my career, I was a marketing consultant. About five years ago, I um, started doing two things. A, I started following Millennial Consumer Trends. We published a big research study, which I led with Boston Consulting Group, on millennials uh, and compared their behaviors versus other generations. Um, that led a couple of opportunities. A, I've since published two books on millennials. And then B, I've also started investing in companies uh, myself uh, that are uh, you know, consumer-facing businesses, uh, in some cases, and B2B brands that are tapping into millennial behaviors. So you're the millennial expert, basically. Uh, I'd, I'd like to think I have reasonable expertise based on the work I've done last week. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so maybe you'll start just a quick definition, and we had a little bit of a chat uh, about this before, but millennials is what, is an age? Basically, they're people that are born this year, this year, that's what we define millennials? How do we define that? So there are not universally agreed definitions of millennial. Uh, just like you could ask uh, two rabbis for opinions and get four opinions. Absolutely. Okay, so uh, I would say uh, from the late 70s to sort of the later 90s as millennials by birth year in the U.S., that might account for about 82 million consumers. Most people think of millennials as broke, unemployed, living in their parents' basement among a collection of participation trophies they've never earned. The reality is 10 million millennials in the U.S. make over $100,000 a year, and the majority of them are women. 15 million millennials have started families in the U.S. 10,000 women today are going to have a child. They're millennials having these children. And one in five stay-at-home parents is a dad, not a woman. For the last year, 2,000 years of civilization, which didn't exist in the U.S. the way it did now, but it did here in Israel, the caregiver was a woman. But now we see 20% of caregivers are dads. So we have a different family dynamic, and the notion of who is a millennial is changing. Uh, what we've been doing recently is codifying the financial impact of millennial influence across generations. So we've looked at millennials through a mindset lens, not among the people by birth year, but rather I could have someone who's 55 who has a millennial mindset, and I could have someone who's 25 who's anti-millennial. Uh, and, and, and so basically maybe the, the overall population probably stays the same pretty much, still around 80 million, but it's actually across maybe a wider range of age, which most of them, the majority of them are born in those years, but as you said, there's some uh, older people that have still that, that mindset. Yeah, so uh, in our study, which you can download from Millennial Marketing, it's called um, you know, Millennial Mindset, uh, what we were looking at is the financial impact of influence, and we found 55% of brand equity performance, you know, market value creation, is related to sort of functional things. Price, promotion, uh, on-shelf position, things, things that I'll call are functional that companies look at. 45% is related to the six mindset factors, which are outlined in the report. I'm going to speak about it at your conference tomorrow. And these mindset factors are sort of the, the, the value of brand and brand performance and marketing. So we have 55% around pricing and functional strategies and 45% around brand strategies and there are six drivers of strategy, uh, which I'll get into at length, but the number one is social circle uh, for most brands and social circle is not social media. Social circle is that my brand is part of cultural conversations and consumers will actually advocate on behalf of the brand at their time experience. They create content and share content on behalf of the brand. That's the number one way we see social circle being manifest itself. Uh, the reality is there's stated performance and derived importance. So I said I was going to eat healthy today. That was stated. I said I was going to go to gym to the gym today. That was stated. There's derived. How did I spend my time and money? Um, both are important, but if we only look at stated, we might miss how I spend Absolutely. time and money. And so this study examined the derived importance and looked at the incremental profit potential at a brand level. Uh, now, we can't share the profit potential at a brand level by for our client, but we do have that value quantified by category, uh, and we did look at many, many brands that were not owned by the client to be able to uh, really uh, get at what was going on below the surface. Wow. And it was a real big company with lots of financial data. Very interesting. Yeah. Um, so, kind of, uh, for, for some, you know, we're very interested in technology, and our startups are always, you know, they're what's called tech startups, and. Uh, uh, we, we specifically like investing in actually consumer-facing uh, uh, startups and technologies. Um, does technology play a bigger factor? I mean, does it play a factor at all for millennials? So the answer is yes and no. There's a huge role around innovation. And if the technology fosters innovation on an ongoing basis, 
then the answer is probably yes. Uh, the flip side is if the technology isn't making something more useful to me as a consumer, then it's not relevant. So it has to be useful. If the technology fits the useful as the new cool theme we see, then it's going to be a winner. And useful is the cool is how I, new cool is sort of how I tend to measure things. So brands want to be more cool. Well, be more useful then. Uh, is there a company right now out there just in general that you would say is kind of performs really well with millennials, that is the millennial company? Is that, can we name a brand like that? So the number one brand in the study that we looked at where I would say it performed across all generations on the millennial mindset was Amazon. Clear winner. As powerful a brand with consumers who are 25 as, brand, as consumers who are 65. Uh, number one, absolute can't miss brand. Uh, having said that, there are clearly brands that are you know newer, younger, that are performing well, um, smaller brands like Uber, uh, not, not small, but relatively speaking, younger brands, if you will, brands like Tesla. Also, you see um, quite a few uh, consumers who still feel and love the brand Google. I mean, honestly, uh, wildly popular brand. Yeah, interesting. Interesting, uh, you know, Uber or Tesla, we'll see those are, as you said, very young brands. Uber already has some, a little bit of cracks there, so it'll be uh, interesting how that, uh, over time... Uh, a lot of friction. That, if, if that, yeah, exactly, a lot of friction. If that sustains over time, is something that uh, we need to sit down again in two, three years and kind of... Uh, They're going to have to address the friction or it won't, it won't work. Uh, of right. course, I mean, yeah, that's yeah. part of the, 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 the 45% brand that you talked about. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so you're here in Israel, not the first time in Israel, right? No. Uh, can you t tell us a little bit kind of from uh, uh, companies you saw, companies you know, or the tech scene in Israel, anything here that uh, you, know, you find exciting, anything that you think uh, uh, we need to work on? So the tech culture here is amazing. Uh, there's a huge entrepreneurial spirit. If I were to sort of try to identify one difference I see between US culture and Israeli culture, uh, I think Israel's, uh, I have a perception that they're operationally ex excellent tech savvy. Uh, I'm not sure I see some of the softer side uh, of uh, brand strategy that some of the great U.S. consumer brands have being uh, in the conversation quite as much. But, but I think that may also be stage of business uh, because uh, you know creating that story uh, that has tangible proof for U.S. consumers I think will be part of it. But there's no doubt that the tech scene here is amazing. Yeah. Amazing sort of that. Good. Uh, Jeff, it's, you know, um, it's a great opportunity to sit and hear these things. I, I don't think we think enough about these things. And, and uh, hopefully in a few years we can talk about some of the great Israeli companies that are marketing well to millennials and the next generation after that. Well, thank you very much for having me. Excellent, Jeff. Thank you so much. Okay.